Hello, welcome to Neil Scribe. In 1768, Captain James Cook embarked on an epic voyage to observe the transit of Venus. This was an excellent opportunity to solve a mystery that puzzled astronomers for thousands of years, and that was discovering the distance between the Earth and the Sun, what we now call the astronomical unit. This involved timing how long it took for Venus to pass through the face of the Sun from different parts of the globe. And determining the distance between observation points and the time measurements of the transit, it would be possible to calculate the distance to the Sun. This was the Age of Enlightenment, and many countries jumped on the opportunity to participate in the investigation. Captain Cook's observation site was important because it was located in the Southern Hemisphere, on King George's Island, what is known as Tahiti today. Indeed, this was the costliest investigation in the name of science ever, up to this point in history. And this would be the last opportunity to observe the transit for more than a hundred years. So on August 26, 1768, Cook set off on board the Endeavour, carrying 94 people and 18 months of provisions. The Endeavour was originally a coal transport ship that converted into a naval research vessel, outfitted with 10 carriage guns and 12 swivel guns. A week into the journey, the Endeavour reached the Bay of Biscay on their way to the Portuguese-controlled island of Madeira. As they reached the bay, some of the scientists on board were making observations of all the wildlife the ship came across, such as porpoises, fish, crabs, and even seaweed. This leads us to the subplot of this adventure, which deserves to be much of the part of the story as the transit of Venus. The scientists were representatives of the Royal Society and included the astronomer Charles Green and the naturalist Joseph Banks and Daniel Solander. The representatives also included two artists to function as the equivalent to today's photographers to draw diagrams of specimens and other worthy subjects. The Endeavour spent five days docked on Madeira and Banks and Solander collected unfamiliar plants and seeds for study. And based on the collection they scored from Madeira, Banks and Solander was excitedly anticipating what they would come across on their next destination, Rio de Janeiro. So by mid-September, the Endeavour departed Madeira, facing a two-month stretch to Rio de Janeiro. Banks, Salander, and the artist spent much of this time recording and describing the specimens they collected from Madeira. This was the golden age of botany, where there was an explosion of discovery in the field. And whenever the ship was in calm waters, Banks rode out on a small ship equipped with an assortment of nets, trolls, and hooks to catch more specimens. Indeed, life on the Endeavour for the scientists was much different than the ship's crew. And because of this, the Endeavour simultaneously served as a hotel, workplace, warehouse, and a fortress. Additionally, it also served as a small farm full of livestock including pigs, poultry, and a milking goat. So by November 1768, the Endeavour reached Rio de Janeiro, where to everyone's disappointment was where they ran into some difficulty. You see, from this point forward, the Endeavour was far from friendly territory, as England's presence in the Southern Hemisphere was minimal. The Viceroy of Rio de Janeiro refused to allow the officers and scientists on shore. They were stuck on the ship. So all the naturalists could do was stare at the shore from the deck for three weeks until the Endeavour was repaired and resupplied. And this was because the Viceroy was suspicious of them. First off, the Endeavour being a small, converted coal ship seemed out of place so far from Europe. And second, the Viceroy did not know about the transit of Venus, and he didn't believe that they were sailing so far just for an astronomical observation. Captain Cook was obviously furious, and all he could do to retaliate was to make detailed notes of all the forts within the harbour to report back to the British Navy. So finally, on December 5th, they departed Rio de Janeiro, heading south towards Cape Horn. Five weeks later, as they approached Cape Horn, something unusual occurred on deck. Swarms of butterflies, moths, and other insects began landing on deck. And Banks made haste to seize the opportunity by paying the crew to collect as many specimens as they could. This was not a big deal for Banks as he had very deep pockets. As a matter of fact, he paid the salaries and expenses for Salander, the personal secretary he had on board, the two artists, he had four servants on board, and he also brought along two greyhounds. Actually, when the voyage began, Cook was a little worried that he would eventually clash with someone with such wealth and esteem on board for such a long time. But the two would quickly come to respect one another. 
Cook admired Banks' wealth and social superiority, and Banks admired Cook's exceptional skills as a leader, his skills as a navigator, and his thirst for knowledge. Indeed, Cook rose from humble beginnings, spending his early career on board coal ships, but always had his sights on serving in the Royal Navy. So in 1755, he joined the Navy and was fighting in the Seven Years' War against the French just a year later. He was naturally good at math and he studied textbooks on his free time. And it was his skills with math that led him to take on surveying duties, which he excelled at because he was a perfectionist. And it was his surveying skills that separated him from his peers as he went on to survey many parts in Newfoundland. And it was during this time he began studying astronomy heavily and he even shared one of his observations with the Royal Society. So the combination of Cook's navigation and surveying skills, along with his experience and knowledge of astronomy, made him the perfect officer to lead this expedition. And as the Endeavour approached Cape Horn, every ounce of Cook's skills would be tested on the long journey ahead. All right, thank you so much for watching. This episode was made in collaboration with Rob from the awesome YouTube channel Decoded. Rob made the incredible render of the cabin of the Endeavour that you saw during this video using the program Blender. I've been a fan of his for a while and even though I don't use Blender, I love watching his videos. I'm in awe of what he can create with that program. I put a link to his channel in the description, so definitely check him out. Okay, episode 2 will be posted on Sunday, August 16th, so be sure to check that out. And for next week, we will be going back to Mars with episode 2 of the Mars Academy, so be sure to check that out as well. Alright, that's all I have for now. I hope you enjoyed your journey. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I am Neil Scribe, and I'll see you on the next journey.